Chapter 1 Our hero is about to embark on a journey. Life as he knows it is quiet, boring, and predictable, but it's also comforting and familiar. That will soon change. Today is the last day of summer, but I'm not doing anything even remotely close to fun. I'm just lying here in Mom's garden, running my hands over the spiky blades of grass, back and forth, back and forth, until my fingertips go numb until everything goes numb. I sigh, but no one's around to hear it. Alex, Dad yells from the kitchen window. Dinner. Already? How long have I been out here? I spring up from the ground, and the grass springs up with me, one blade at a time. Boing, boing, boing. The sounds would be imperceptible to any normal person, but they tickle the insides of my ears. I picture an army of earthworms raising the blades of spears in their turf wars and smile to myself. Dad opens the back door and calls out to me again. Come on, Alex. What's taking you so long? Grabbing my cane, I shuffle over to the house, brushing past him as I squeeze inside. The kitchen reeks of fast food restaurants and movie theaters. Butter and grease. That means it's breakfast for dinner. We do this every Sunday night because Mom goes out to garden club and Dad doesn't know how to cook anything else. Plus, it's cheap. Breathing heavily, Dad plunks some food onto both our plates and collapses into his chair. He groans and asks me to pass the butter, or rather, the butter. He grew up in Boston, and every once in a while his accent works itself into his speech. I slide the tub to Dad. He reaches out and stops it before it slides clear off the table. What's this? Dad asks. Uh, the butter, obviously. Dad's voice raises an octave. I know it's the butter, so don't get smart. Why'd you give it to me? Because you asked me to? No, I didn't. He exhales, as if the wind has been knocked out of him by an ill-timed punch to the stomach. Yes, you must have read my mind. He chuckles to himself and slides the cool metal knife into the butter and scrapes it across his toast. Dad and I don't usually talk to each other unless Mom is around, asking about our days, chatting on, working hard to create those warm and fuzzy family moments we don't seem to create naturally. Even though Mom has reassured me a million times, I know Dad resents me for being born blind. I can tell he would have much rather had a son like Brady, the same guy who insists on making my high school experience as difficult as possible. Ugh, Brady. I shiver at the thought of dealing with him tomorrow. Nothing's worse than knowing your own father thinks you're a loser. Dad and I finish our meal in silence, and my mind wanders. He rises from his chair, breaking apart my thoughts. Let's get this table cleared before your mother comes home, he says, without pronouncing the R in cleared. I stand, too, and pick up my plate and glass. Guess I'll pass on that fifth biscuit. Your mother has a surprise for you. I smile for Dad's benefit. My parents are horrible at keeping secrets. Last night I overheard them talking in their room. Mom was bragging about how she found some cute new shades on Walmart's clearance rack. About ten minutes later, the tires of Mom's van crunch on the gravel in our driveway, with lots of little pings and a big clunk. As usual, she steers directly into the pothole we don't have the money to repair. Sometimes I wonder if she does it on purpose.